Welcome to the Chaos and Light Podcast. I am your host, Angela Levesque, and on today's episode, we have Martina Thompson, and we are discussing uh, the ways that our subconscious and emotional blocks um, prevent us from leading the life that we really, truly desire. So that'll be coming up in just a minute. Most of you know the Chaos and Light Podcast is part of the Chaos and Light community. If you haven't checked it out, please go to chaosandlight.com. It's an online space for spiritual seekers to connect, inspire, and expand with one another and receive the tools and support that you require um, for your personal evolution. So please go to chaosandlight.com and check that out. Um, yes, and I just want to thank all those people who have taken the time to share Chaos and Light podcast with friends and um, leave reviews. I really, really appreciate it. So if you hear something and you like it, I would just be so honored and grateful if you could share it. Well, when we get back from this ridiculously short break, we will have Martina Thompson talking about um, removing emotional and subconscious resistance. Are you enjoying this podcast and want to help this lady out? Well, share it with friends, or even better, leave a review on iTunes. We'd love to hear from you. Now back to the show. Uh, I'm here today with Martina Thomason. Uh, She's a certified entrepreneur, coach who specializes in helping conscious women entrepreneurs release emotional and subconscious resistance. She has a bachelor's degree with a triple major in marketing, management, and entrepreneurship, as well as a master's in digital marketing. She spent seven years in Australia, worked a year in Japan as a visual artist, as well as working in corporate doing consulting and coaching executives in small, medium, and large companies. Through the years, Martina has coached international influencers and change makers. Today, she's proud to run a business with global reach and help other conscious women do the same. Well, Martina, welcome to the Chaos and Light podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Yes, I'm very excited. And I love that we have that little connection. I'm in Japan right now, but you, um, how long ago did you live in Japan? That would have been in 2014 to 15, I think, yeah. And in what area? <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. It's one of the, like, it's the fifth biggest city in Japan, but nobody seems to know about it. It's called Fukuoka. Oh, yes. I do know that. I'm you in- know about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't been there. But- you're there. Yes. Well, um, let's jump right in. I uh, I myself have done... Um, work with people. One of my things is the way that I put it as I help people understand um, who they are and why they make the choices they make. And once they start doing root digging, kind of getting at what's underneath and being able to clarify their motivations, all of a sudden, all these different things uh, open up for them. So what are some of the common (laughs) unconscious blocks and beliefs that you see uh, often in your work with clients? Yeah, so as you were saying, I work with conscious women entrepreneurs. And so a lot of it sort of comes back to the business aspect. And there's a lot of like worthiness stuff going on there. Um, And so some of the things that we're looking at is that your personal worthiness stuff doesn't need to to, um, have to impact your business value. Because business worth or business value comes from your skill set and you know what the value that you can provide to people so separating those two but also knowing that us an entrepreneur uh, are um we are kind of the or our business is the extension of ourselves and so whenever we dig up some dirt in our department uh it sort of spills into our business so um i see a lot of like i can't do do this but others can like people think that they're so special in that uh yeah but I I don't know how to do it um and it's so common like everybody thinks that they're the odd one out that can't make it happen and whenever we hear like oh if I can do it everybody can do it and and we're secretly like yeah right like you obviously had it going for you (laughs) and so like really seeing that yes you can too like with your unique 
gifts and talents and values like how can we make that work for you and how you want to live your life um and also a lot of people blaming their circumstances for things like oh if I only had more money if I only had more time um if I didn't have kids or like all these things so we're like trying to use our external circumstances against ourselves and how we can create things and and um, make our business thrive so that's something that I see a lot uh, whereas it always comes back to your mindset and your thoughts and so when you hear say for example when people make excuses like if you know I just don't have enough time or I don't have enough money to get started do you think that there's something to this idea of where they are in their stage of change? So my background is actually exercise physiology. And we would talk about like, where are people, are they ready? If they're still making excuses, are they ready to uh, take some of those steps necessary to break through these barriers and obstacles? Or is that something that you find that that work can be done by anybody, no matter, you know, how they, how they come to you and how ready they are to make to make some of those enduring changes. Yeah, so as you say, like people are at different stages uh, in where they've gotten so far on their own, but then my work is to level them up and, and say, okay, with where you are at the moment, with your current mindset, um, what are the reasons why you're telling yourself this? Like, what does it stem from? As you were saying before we started talking as well, like when we have that introspection and and realizations and creating the, that awareness about ourselves, then that really quantum leaps us forward because if we know where a root is coming from, we can then look at it and go, okay, I see you, I hear you, um, and how can we make it comfortable? How can we make agreements with that, per that part of ourselves that isn't ready and that person that wants to go forward and find out, okay, we can go forward um, if we do it in a certain way, like we wouldn't just splash ourselves all over the internet. If you have, you know, all these things about uh, playing it big or whatever, we would um, find out where would you be most comfortable to jump over the fence? And it's different for everyone, but we need to start by looking at the core roots and, and then finding out it's almost like, it's almost like a seed. And if we can get the seed up, then all of the roots, uh, we pull that up with it sort of thing. Like it just takes on different faces. So really finding that core uh, seed that, that's giving you all of these uh, limiting beliefs is very much how I work. And what are some of the tools that we, you would use to um, help uncover some of these beliefs? Yeah, so a super fun exercise that I love doing with my clients is to have them dream up something big, like really leaving the, their logic outside and just playing with the magic. Like if I could have a magic wand um, and you could do anything, what would be your ideal scenario? And for most people, it wouldn't actually be like live in a mansion or like be a billionaire. That's not actually what they want. Like what they actually want is um, – for example, be able to buy organic food for every meal and to have enough time with my family and to, um, you know, grow my business to a certain extent. And so even though you let them do whatever, like that, like, or even though you allow them to dream of whatever, it's not going to be way out of, um, it's, it's going to be achievable at some level. And so we dream up this big thing. We write down all the things that would be your ideal life. And then we take a new sheet of paper and then we write down all the reasons why you don't think that you can get there. What are all your fears? What would have you, like, what would have you uh, take a step back and just go, oh, no, I don't, I don't know about this. Then that that you've created is actually a list of your resistance. And when you have friction, and roadblocks in getting where you want, then it's obviously going to be harder to, to manifest that life. And so that is a very practical way to go about finding out exactly where your work needs to be at that moment. And that list can evolve and fluctuate and whatever, but you've got something to start out with. And then obviously I coach my clients through each of those single thoughts. 
So when it, you had some specific wording on your website that I really like, and I've heard other people describe it as, you know, what are you uniquely designed to do? But you have um, your unique zone of genius. Uh, do you find yeah. that most people are aware where, you know, what their zone is? Or is that something that uh, through work with you that they have to explore? Yeah, so most people have a slight idea of it. Um, but I, I listened to one of your previous podcasts as well with a lady that does the marketing automations and stuff. And she's really, she really put uh, good words on it. And she, she was saying um, that whatever you think is easy and that you're doubting that people will pay for, that's generally it, you know? So I also say like, go, go in the direction of what brings you joy and the things that you find yourself doing when you're having time off. Like, what would you do while you're procrastinating doing other things? And I'm not talking about, you know, doing the dishes. I'm talking about, like, on your business or whatever. Um, so just creating that awareness. Um, obviously, it can have to do with your personality, uh, uh, traumas that you've overcome and all of those things. So to really package it in, that can be more of a process. But to get like the overview and starting point, it's really just to look at what do I actually really enjoy doing and comes really easy to me. And is that, um, you know, I know that you have done work in, uh, you know, various different sizes of corporations. And so that what you're saying to me sounds more uh more in alignment with like the solopreneur, somebody like myself who kind of works for themselves and builds from builds from that place. If you were talking to somebody who was working more in a, you know, a corporate structure, how would that same idea of u- unique zone of genius apply to something that's a little bit more, well, you know, part of something much larger? Yeah, so this, um, I don't know how it is in the States at the moment, but in Norway, there is this really beautiful trend with the managers um, giving you space to do what you're good at, because they realize that if you do what you're really good at, even though the job description might be something else, and they realize that you're really flowering and blossoming over here, then they might say, look, um, we know that this other person in our office is better suited to some of your tasks. So we'll delegate those to those and they really enjoy them. And then maybe you can take on some of that from them. So really like having um, maybe talking to your manager about the possibility of collaboration, uh, like horizontal collaboration and uh, skill management. Yes. I, I don't know that that's, <laughs> A very American way of, of, um, but that makes a lot of sense. And I think that for sure in smaller, um, in smaller companies, that would be the ideal way to go. And I think it's a little bit more out of alignment with the way corporates, corporate structure is, um, put together, at least in the United States, but that would be the, the ideal thing to do, right? It's work with people's strengths and, um, find out how they, uh, you know, where, where it's the best fit for them and how, you know, you can work yeah. with each other's strengths and weaknesses. And Yeah. But I also think like there's such a wave of people that start working for themselves. And I think that it is because of the structure that is so rigid and there is no wiggle room for our more feminine aspect is so uh, based in the masculine and so it sort of sucks the life out of people. And so they just go, um, well, I have to uh, abort mission. Like I have to start for myself because clearly I can't breathe in this structure. So I think that uh, if corporations want to continue the way that they're currently like being structured, they need to just look at their systems and the way that they go about it within those structures. So uh, there's lots of different ways I'd like to go here. One thing, uh, when talking about our strengths and, you know, our, our zone of, of genius, how do you look at weaknesses? Are they something that we, you look at and think, okay, th- these are the areas we need to bolster, or are you more focused on a strengths perspective where it's all, let, let's 
let's go where the energy is. Let's go where um, the interest is and the passion. Yeah. So I am all about um, cultivating your strengths. And then, um, and I also think that it's so beautiful that we do have weaknesses because if we write like a weakness list, then we can translate it to our VA list, <laughs> you know, like as we build our business, we can delegate that to virtual assistants. And so uh, in us being poor at it, we create room and space for others to blossom in that space. And and really, truly focusing on harnessing your strength, then it, it's just such a more abundant way of going. Like, instead of trying to um, get get an apple tree to become an, a, a, an orange tree, you're like, okay, well, what can I do to make this apple tree create really juicy apples? So I just think that um, it's, it's, or training a fish to fly, like it's, why can't we, why does everyone have to be good at everything? I just think that um, just, just really cultivating what we're given is so much more in alignment with thriving. And, you know, we lose track of time. We're so like, we, we pretty much don't feel like we spend energy. We get energized from doing the things that we love. So why should we be squeezed into a square hole when we're around pig? Yes. Well, to follow up on what you said about um, corporate structure and being all about the masculine, I'd like to have a little breakdown. I don't know if you know, but chaos and light. Chaos is actually the divine feminine. Light is masculine. So I'm all about finding ways for those two things to complement each other. And so first, let's start with the masculine. In what way, like for myself, having some structure actually gives me freedom. And so that's yeah. a really important thing that I, I have, I, I allow myself to have the cycles within the structure. Um, so I'd, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about what you think, where the masculine fits and then where you think the, the feminine fits. Yeah. So in, in entrepreneurship, it's, uh, it's very often that we, I see that uh, entrepreneurial people have all these different passions and they're so creative or, or they have so many energies and such visionaries so that they just stand there and spin their wheels and so that creative flowing juiciness is just spilling all over and they're spreading themselves too thin whereas if you do have those structures set in place by you based on your strengths your preferences your core values then that um, juiciness can flow within that space and and really having self-discipline to follow a schedule during the day in certain hours gives you full freedom afterwards because there's not things hanging over you and you're feeling like you have to do things all the time so you, like instead of never really having time off because your mind is somewhere else then having that structure in place that you've set up based on your preferences whether you be you know a morning person or or more of a night owl um, you know you just set those structures and and you really get that uh, yin and yang, if you will. Um, and I also like to look at businesses like our bodies. Like we need the masculine. We need what I then would would compare to the skeleton and the muscles would be the masculine that holds it all up and makes it all happen. Uh, and then our uh, internal organs is what receives the nutrients and transmutes it into energy that again fuels our muscle uh, muscles and skeleton so that we can grow and, and thrive. So uh, we really need, it, it's just the beauty of balance. We need them both. And, you know, having, having dreams without um, taking aligned actions towards them is just going to remain a thought or a dream. Like it's not going to become a result for you. Yes. I know for myself, you know, I, I have, I don't know if you're familiar with Trello, but I have my Trello board. And so I lay out, you know, the ta the things that I want to accomplish for the day, but then once they're done, then it's done. And then I'm out going for a walk or a hike or, you know, or if I know that I can do something later, like there's, there's still flexibility in my day, but there's something about, um, especially for me having that visual layout and then just, 
so it's like, yes, there's always, cause there's always more tasks. There's always other things that need to get done. But if I know that I have it laid out and I can see it and then it's like, okay, great. It's 11 AM, but I'm done. And so now I'm going to go and have, you know, go out for lunch with someone or, or do whatever. And to me, that, that is, is a sense of freedom. So I really, yeah. that works well for me. Yeah. And then again, like you're filling up your own cup so that you can give when you come back and sit down and follow your structure again. And by following the structure, you feel a sense of achievement and and you sort of grow from that process as well. And you're seeing that you're creating things. And and it's just a really beautiful balance between that. So I have been playing a lot with this idea of freedom um, I think I just mentioned it several times. When you think about freedom, <laughs> what does it, and you know, in a lot of the work that I've done with people, that's something that they crave, like that idea of freedom. And freedom, I think, can can show up in a lot of different ways. So I wanted to ask from your personal perspective, like what does having it, that sense of freedom mean to you? Um, yeah, so I think that, well, I'm, in the firm belief actually <laughs> that freedom is an inside job and um, we we have freedom because of the way we think like you could feel someone could feel freedom in um, working a nine-to-five job because they're getting freedom from their family if that's really you know a horrible situation or, or whatever so it's very individual and it's how we perceive things so um, freedom can be a result of the thoughts you're you're thinking and the, the feelings that you're feeling and the actions that you're taking um, so really starting with what everything starts with a thought you know, and then just building up your life around that. And if if freedom is a really big value for you, then obviously um, having a strategy for that and um, having a system for that is is really great. Um, but yeah, I, I think that it always just starts with how we think about something. And And for me, like ultimate freedom is to be able to live my life on my terms and doing what I love the most uh, without any external restrictions. Yes. I like that you say it's an inside job and that it is very tied to our thoughts and our thinking patterns and our constructs. And because the, from a, when another thing that I really enjoy, if I don't know if you're familiar with Carlos Castaneda, but he, and there's a whole group of, of, um, literature around warriorship and warriorship from like the Toltec wisdom traditions is about the proper use of our energy. So they have this term called impeccability. And basically it's being effective and efficient with our, with our personal power. And so we can't possibly be effective and efficient with our personal power if we are have our energy bound up in habits or habitual thinking. That's, that's a big piece of it is our thoughts and um, indulging in our emotions. If we're getting, you know, creating these stories um, that all of that is very connected. Well, it binds our power. And then we don't have that power to be able to go out and do in the world and to achieve and to accomplish and all of those things. Um, is this something that you've ever, have you, do you think about this idea of, of personal power and ways that we um, kind of lose it or bind it uh, through our thoughts and our, our, our programming and thinking patterns? Yeah, for sure. Like we have, like as entrepreneurs, especially like our energy could be spread out to the end of the universe because there's so many things that we could do like there are so many people that we could try to please and all of that so setting firm boundaries and not have any uh, energy leakages through our boundaries is really important but also um, I think expectation management because if we try to um, please everyone then and sort of not letting other people down and having all of our energy go, going into that, then ultimately we're disappointing ourselves and what we want to do with our lives. And so I think really having 
um, again, like I just always start with a thought because I see that the domino effect starts there, you know. So if I um, if I choose to think that uh, my well-being and energy and power should be lying with me, then I might feel empowered and the actions that I take might be setting boundaries and, and have a, having a certain structure around how I live. And then the result of that being that you don't lose your power because you have set yourself up for that. You have some interesting uh, questions that you had sent me, some of the stuff that you like to talk about. And, and there's a few things I think that um, run contrary to maybe the, the, the new age view of spirituality. So the idea that, um, no, and and I would agree with you, but this idea that, you know, being positive won't always get you the results that you want. So I wanted you to speak on that a little bit. Yeah. So what I mean with that is that uh, in the spiritual community, it's always this striving for being positive or in some, some certain communities. And what I see that is, is spiritual bypassing. Because underneath, like we have this uh, sort of fixed smile, but underneath, if we take off that mask, like there's all these uh, limiting beliefs, all these uh, other emotions, and and it almost puts positivity up on a pedestal, and as like this is what it should be. But then, like if you feel any other emotions, then then you're sort of shaming yourself for that. So you're not allowing your full human experience, and also. Um, in really listening to your pain or listening to your frustration or anger or or sadness, you find out, okay, where do I need healing? Where do I need to uh, put, put care and compassion for myself? And and I think that being neutral is more of a heightened state than trying to be positive all the time because when you're neutral, you're sort of coming in from the higher perspective, looking down at an overview of of your thoughts it's it's like it's almost like this um benevolent guy that's like okay well you're feeling this right now and that's fine so you know what would make it better and it's not like forcefully like oh but I really have to think positively about it like I can make this happen and like go 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 it's just it it's inauthentic and and the universe responds to what we are and not how we try to um, show ourselves to the world. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I think a lot, well, for myself, my meditation practice is a really important piece of being able to learn to be neutral, to, to witness things. And I absolutely agree with you that idea that we our emotions are really good. I call them data points. Like they're very good data points because they tell us where those beliefs are, those unconscious beliefs, those limiting beliefs. And it's like, okay, oh, wow. I can see like there's anger here. There's something there or that really triggered me for some reason. There's something there for me to look at. And so it's a wonderful data point, but having that um, meditation practice allows you to witness and move from that place of what I call divine neutrality and you witness them instead of um you know I've had experiences where somebody has said something to me and I can feel that fire rise up in my belly like oh that you know but I I know enough that I now don't have to respond from that place I can I can witness that that you know caused quite a reaction a very visceral reaction in my body but I don't have to react from that place of, you know, irritation or being offended or something. Um, is that something, yeah. that idea of data points, does that re- resonate to you with you? Yeah, for sure. And it comes back to the strengths and weaknesses that we were talking about before as well. Like it's, I just think that it's divine guiding that we have these weaknesses, we have these emotions, like it's always sort of gently uh, pointing us in the direction that we're meant to go on. Like this is your path because uh, you know, this is your strengths or um, this is making you angry. So someone crossed a line for you here or this is making frustration. So it's not how you want it to, to be. So it, it truly just um, helps you see the path for you clearer. 
Do you, how much uh, do you dive into the mystery with your clients? Like with, as far as uh, helping them get in touch with their intuition or, um, you know, doing journeys or, or something like that. Is there, is there a piece of that, that, you know, we talked about the structure and the masculine, but is, um, are there tools or techniques that you use to help people get more in touch with that emotional, uh, you know, divine feminine aspects of themselves? Yeah, so um, I love working with people that are open to spirituality and, and that's sort of my um, ideal clients are the ones that I can use that language with. But some people come to me and they're just not using that vocabulary. So I might not always use the divine feminine. I might not always talk about your higher self or whatever, but I will ask them questions so that they have realizations themselves and come to conclusions themselves that would be the same as me using that other language. So really getting to the point of it, but but sort of meeting them where they're at um, is really something that I work a lot with. And ultimately it is to, you know, coaching them to um, finding the best solutions for them, the highest uh, solutions that will get them to, their most desired outcomes, uh, growing that business, earning this amount of money, uh, you know, living a lifestyle that supports whatever lifestyle they want to. Um, But I am also certified, uh, like while I was in Japan, I was certified first, second and third level Reiki master. I've got this other uh, healing modality um, as well that I've done which is called Tesla Metamorphosis Healing. And I uh, also am certified in something called the completion process. So um, there's this lady called Teal Swan. Um, she, a lot of people know about her. And so I went to her and got training in her completion process, which is like an inner child thing uh, where you really go into the first point of a pattern being made like when was the first time you experienced this or felt this and then you sort of drag it out by the root so um, I offer year-long coaching sessions or coaching programs and uh, for those I also offer one completion session included so when we coach throughout that whole year I will find uh, patterns and the deepest one that is the most tricky to get out we will Uh, allocate a completion process or an inner child uh, healing process which can take everything from one hour to three hours like you just have to sit with it until the process is done and and really digging into that inner child work so uh, I am using like all of these different things that I have done in my past in my coaching but um, sometimes more subtle than others (laughs) No, that totally, because I also, I'm trained in Reiki and healing touch and reconnective healing. And yes, depending, like you said, you have to meet people where they're at because you want them to be able to receive um, information. And if you start using language or, you know, terms that are just outside of their, their, their framework, it's much harder yeah. for them to, to, to receive what they need to receive from that. So yeah, in some cases we talk about stress reduction and in other cases we're diving deep into chakras and symbolic sight and <clears throat> archetypes and all sorts of things. And yeah, I mean, that's part of being, um, you know, a good communicator is, is understanding where people are and saying it in a way that is um, more accessible. Yeah, for sure. I love that you have all of those, uh, like all of the um, energy work. And do you find that when you're talking about that process, getting down to like the root, root core memory, do do you often find that that seed is um, not enoughness? I'm not good enough. Yeah, yeah, very much so, especially for uh, women, which I'm I'm working with. Um, it's it's like not good enough, um, I'm, I'm not worthy. Um, yeah, primarily those two. Um, but then when you go deeper into that, it's like, what are you afraid of? And it always comes back to rejection and connection and that sort of stuff, you know. Um, so that is sort of the sphere that we're we're sort of diving into. But it's very different how it manifests. 
Uh, so, so it's super interesting, you know, that we're coming down to the core of it and, and really being able to work with that. What do you feel, what are your thoughts on visualization and affirmations? Yeah, interesting question. So uh, visualization, I am all down for because I'm so interested in neuroscience and that sort of scientific aspect as well. And there's a lot of really interesting research that has come up, you know, saying that our brain can't tell the difference between something that we're visualizing uh, versus something that is real. And so visualization is a tool that I also use in my coaching where I set my uh, coaching clients up from the beginning that we create a visualization for them to listen to every morning and preferably also every evening, just a really short one, um, so that they really train their brain to get to a certain point um, of seeing that repeatedly. But um, affirmations, I have um, a couple of disclaimers around because I just think that re repeating affirmations over and over again, if you don't believe them, is might be creating more resistance that you over and than that you already have because you ha might have your brain saying, uh, or say you you have the affirmation, "I am a millionaire." Just something and then one part of you is like hell no I'm not a millionaire what are you talking about you lied to me what the hell like are we are we lying as well now we're both poor and lying to ourselves and so um really finding out how you can tell your brain something that you want without lying to it so for example it and it all comes down to the language like it's so it's almost like magic because it's like uh, if you introduce your feelings as well, then it makes it a little bit easier. So, for example, it feels so good to be earning um, more money. It was like, I'm not lying to myself. It would feel really nice to earn more money. But you don't like you're not saying that you did it before, that you're doing it in the future or if you're doing it right now. So um, and also bridging the gap be between where you're at at the moment and where you want to be. So, for example, um, in those visualizations, we focus on your strengths. Like, where, what are the reasons why you can achieve your goals? Like, um, I can create a thriving business because I have um, this and this experience. I'm getting amazing feedback. I am, um, you know, seeing results with my clients all the time. And so really selling it to yourself in a way that you're actually receptive to, to believing it. Yes, I like the the idea of bringing the emotion into it as well. Because if you just say, you know, I am a millionaire, that's very cognitive. It, it's not embodied. There's no, you know, you need when you want to bring something into your life through manifestation or magic or whatever it is. There needs to be that sense of of um, like will and desire and emotion as well as, you know, inviting in the brain and, and visualizing it. And so it, it just even hearing you say that has a completely different energy to it than I am a millionaire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're so much more engaged in the process when, when you say it that way. So um, uh, how does resistance, how are resistance and manifestation related? everything <laughs> it's just so interrelated it's, it's just so funny um <laughs> so um I just put down some notes actually for that because yeah I just um uh, thought it would be fun to prepare a little bit but yeah so um it, it was it kind of comes back to um what I was saying before with having roadblocks so when I was talking about writing down your wildest dreams on a piece of paper and then on the other side, writing down all the ways you don't think that you can achieve it, it's like um, that is all the obstacles that you're facing. And and when there is like friction in your way to getting there, like it's just, it doesn't work. Uh, it's, um, we have, I was kind of uh, pointing it out earlier as well, but we have, there's something in psychology called parts work. It's called many things, like some call it in, in 
internal family systems and there's like all these different names on it. But what it comes down to is that we have <laughs> pretty much multiple personalities inside of us where it's like on one hand, you would love to build your own business. You would love to um, create something based on your talents. But then you have this other part of yourself that's like, uh, yeah, but I'm not good enough. Like, I don't dare to. Like, what if this happens or that happens? What about finances? What about that? And so what happens then is that you have this internal conflict. And when you have this thug of war, like, you're not really being able to go to either side. Like, you're uh, not manifesting what you want. And you're also not going the other direction because you have everyone's pulling in their different directions. And so whether you are aware of it or not, like consciously or subconsciously, we have these internal battles. And if and it also comes back to that positivity again. Like you can say that you want something or you can say that you're positive, but you really need to look at, well, if I truly believe that I could have it, I would have seen the results right now. And then really finding out what are the things that are stopping me? And it's always come always comes back to resistance. Um because it is like when you truly, truly believe something, when when you truly think that you are the best at um, creating, and I don't even know, like uh, if you if you're the best at uh, creating the most beautiful flower bouquets, then and you truly believe that everyone needed that in their lives. You would go out, go out there, and and you your enthusiasm would rub off on others, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, of course I I need that because I I feel what you feel." And um, if you have that, oh I don't know if everyone wants bouquets, like maybe that's a little bit, you know, two thousand twenty, like giving people flowers. Um, so you really like your energy so depends on where your head is at, and if you have that internal uh, conflict within you then that is going to reflect in your external reality as well. And, you know, the, uh, and I know for myself, and these, it's been a long process of working through some of these barriers, but the whole point of, you know, marketing and that piece is so much more difficult if you have those barriers in place, because like you said, your whole energy is, if you're like, yeah, well, I think I can make these pretty flowers, but you know, maybe, you know, I don't want to be too pushy or I don't, you know, and you realize when you have a gift and you have a passion and like you said, it becomes contagious because you're sharing from such a, a, a like a passionate, authentic place that comes across so differently. So I, I found that that whole, you know, marketing piece, and I've seen this with many, many of my, um, you know, peers in the spiritual work, they don't like to market because it feels icky, but what I've kind of just think is that it's just our own shit that we <laughs> haven't worked through for sure 100 percent for sure <laughs> like there's there's three beliefs that you have to tick in order to be effective in marketing or in in um business uh because obviously if you're running a business you need to market and sale uh market and sell sorry so um you need belief in yourself like the fact that you are actually a great person to deliver this and whatever that entails, like the package, you. And then you have to have full belief in the fact, in the package that you're delivering, like the product, the service. Like, is that a high quality? Is that something that you're proud of? And then you have to have um, full belief in your customers. You have to believe that they want it, that they're willing and able to pay for it, that there is a, a demand for it. So if any of those are off, then it's going to be really hard to to sell it. But if you're taking 100% on all of those three, it's like, of course, like you're the best person to deliver it. You have the best product for the people that you're talking to and your people are loving it and they are willing and able to pay for it, then they will buy. <laughs> so it sounds really simple, but it always comes back to that mind work and and thought work and and really believing that you are the the best at delivering it. And if you don't think that, then who do you who do you need to become to be the person that has this amazing product and has these people wanting to buy your products? Um, not saying that you should change yourself, but who do you 
need to grow into, like to to step into, to get that to happen. Well, I love that. Well, we are up on our time. You have a wonderful offer um, for Chaos and Light listeners. Uh, so this is, I always yeah. let my, uh, my um, interviewees here take a moment and share website, social media, um, anything you'd like to leave my listeners with today. Yeah, so um, my website is martinathomason.com. And I also have a podcast called Conscious Women Entrepreneurs Podcast. And you can also follow me on Instagram, which is at Martina Thomason Coaching. And I love to hear back from you. And so if you take a screenshot of this podcast episode and tag both of us, uh, Chaos and Light, as well as myself, and let us know the highlights, I would love to hear that. Um, And also, I would love to offer all of the listeners of this show a free coaching. So a 60-minute full coaching session. Uh, Just send me a message on Instagram and let me know that you heard this episode. And I would be happy to give you a taste. Well, that is incredibly generous of you. Thank you so much. Um, I thought we touched on some really great stuff today. So uh, I'm glad you reached out. And thank you for coming on the, the podcast. Do you believe in synchronicity and synergy? That when people share, connect, and collaborate from an authentic space, amazing things can and do happen? Then check out the Chaos and Light community, an online space for spiritual seekers that supports personal growth and gives you a frequent touch point to stay connected to your spiritual core. Join a group, attend a gathering, be inspired by our muse feed, all in a politics-free, ad-free environment. So dive deep into your spirituality at chaosandlight.com. Connect, inspire, expand. Well, that is today's episode. Thank you for listening. Coming up next week, we will have the wonderful uh, Andrew Martin back on as a guest co-host. And uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out chaosandlight.com, please do. Well, that's it. Take care and seek the mystery.